All right, welcome back to another DIY van build. My name's Kurt. I have three major things that are left on the van. I uh, got to build the garage system here out of 8020. Second thing is upper cabinets need to be built. And the third thing is the roof. So need to build a roof rack system and up there we're going to be putting solar panels up and we are going to be putting a deck and we'll have an awning probably not going to go into a whole bunch of detail in the 8020 back here more the layout but actually how we did it check out the video up here shows the brackets what bolts we used you know there's a lot of that stuff in our series so you can go back and check out if you're just watching this for the first time but uh let's get to it let's get to work man All right, so the problem I'm running into down here on this water tank is the water tank's not straight. It's got a bow to it. So trying to lay these out, um, it's a little bit more difficult, but it, it can flex a little bit. So as long as I'm outside the hard edges, I think I'm okay. It's time to cut this tank. I totally messed up on the water tank. You know, you get options of what types of fittings that you want uh, in this. And I had no clue where to put them, what type of fitting. So when I got it and started really sitting down and thinking about it, I'm like, great. Now what am I going to do? But the reason I need a hole in this, obviously, is I need my supply line for my water pump. And I need a fill. And we're doing the fill a little different. We're actually going to filter the water before it gets into the tank. Because the tank isn't going to have any drain. I don't want any penetrations on the bottom. I want them all up top. I don't want this thing to leak. So with this, we're going to filter. We're going to have a three canister filter that filters the water in. And then off the pump, I'm going to have a single canister uh, filter. So we can get water basically anywhere you know from a from a river from a lake obviously you try to pick a, a clean cleanest water source you can and i want to have it permanently uh installed so i got to get this done and uh let's do it Awesome. So there we go. Take that piece, glue it on here, epoxy, then epoxy this down. But see, I had to cut this so, I, like I said, I can mount this in there permanently and clean this out because I have no drain on the bottom. Get that. We'll poke a pop a couple holes and I can clean this out. Then I can get this installed in the van. And then all I got to do is just put the fittings in, tighten everything up, epoxy this back together, and we're good to go. Woo! Boy, it's been hot, been busy. Bam, got the garage done. It's going to be another fridge. Uh, got three drawers here, got some hefty duty slides on the bottom. The garage or brains of this operation was quite an undertaking that required a fair amount of planning. 
As you can see, it's a pretty tight fit. Putting it all together was a very complicated game of Tetris, and there wasn't much room for error. Let's briefly outline what's under the bed, starting with the water filtration system. As mentioned earlier in the video, we purchased a 50-gallon Elkhart plastic water tank from RecPro.com. Our fill line goes through a three-stage filtration system that we bought from Clear Source before entering the tank. This process removes sediment, rust, VOCs, chemicals, and other contaminants that would otherwise make our water unsafe to drink. We chose to add yet another fourth filter as the water is pumped out of the tank and flows to our faucets. This will remove any funk that may have settled into the reservoir. The pump we installed is a Seaflow 55 series water pump found on Amazon. Our plumbing is made up of PEX tubing for both cold and hot water. We managed to squeeze in a 5 gallon ISO temp water heater. We found it only takes about 45 minutes to an hour to heat the water and will stay warm for a couple of days. All four of us can shower military style with plenty of hot water to spare. Moving on to the electrical system, we settled on three 100 amp hour lithium batteries from Battleborn, a 3000 watt Victron Multi Plus inverter, a 30 amp PAL Mr. MPPT solar charge controller, and a 50 amp Red Arc DC to DC charger. We left space for an additional battery, DC to DC charger, and additional solar panel on down the road if needed. Our entire rig is all electrical. We decided not to have any propane on board, purely due to personal choice. We just didn't want the headaches that come along with filling the gas or finding the space for it. And maybe you guys can take a glimpse up there. Let's get some more of these cabinets done, these upper cabinets. Let's get back to work. Wow, that was a pain. This, these things are made for thin wood, but uh, got it in. This is the dimmer for this light. It'll be for the kitchen. These will get painted, get them wired up, got a wire hanging up there. Let's keep going, keep building these things. Down in the All right, y'all, I wanted to go over how we assembled these upper cabinets. And let's start here with the fronts. So the cabinet fronts are made out of beech wood with the live edge. And the construction here, we ended up going with a hardwood one by three, which you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, any type of hardwood or pine. And then the bottom and the sides are Baltic birch. And I'm wanting to say these are three quarter inch Baltic birch. Yes, they're three quarter inch. And then we got the soft close hinges here. We have the struts so it keeps it open. And these turned out really well. 
Uh, we have a magnetic lock here to keep it from rattling. So we got a big box here, upper cabinet. We have one over the kitchen. And then we have two back here in the bedroom. And these are for our clothes. And then also in between these, we got a pantry. Same thing, three quarter inch Baltic birch, one by three hardwood or pine, whichever you choose. And these are pocket jigged together in the same, basically same design. We have little leather straps here on the front um, for handles. We didn't want something uh, hard that you could run into here in the van, but I think they turned out really well. So now let's talk about this piece of wood right here. Um, what a joy to make, but a tedious process. We have black walnut. We actually have two pieces of black walnut. And we wanted this to mimic like a river and a waterfall going down. So probably not the best person to go into detail on an epoxy countertop plenty of videos on YouTube but definitely a process between that process of milling this and then taking it and getting it planed and sanded it and then making a forum to pour the epoxy and then you have seal coats and flood coats it, it, it's definitely a process but the final product is very rewarding between this thing being kiln dried and the whole nine yards, um, I'd say probably about a four month process. And uh, I think it turned out very well. And also we have a table, a lagoon table as well, which we'll show you, same process. And it's black walnut as well. The lagoon table, this is pretty neat. Same epoxy process as a countertop. Um, but what's neat about this is the mount here, we have this in our 80-20, so the frame, so it's really strong. And the lagoon mount works awesome. I mean, the kids can sit here and do schoolwork or eat. We also have a mount outside as well, so we can move this outside. And you can put any tabletop you want. We just want it to match the countertop. So this is black walnut as well. And this is an end slice of it. And they all turned out really well. All right, excited to start the roof rack on the van, getting the solar set up. We're gonna have a deck on the back. But I uh, kinda wanted to go over real quick how I designed uh, the roof rack. I went with a two by two square aluminum and then I got the Vantec adapters that goes from basically it looks like a little bolt head that comes out of the van and the adapter takes that into two 5 16 uh, carriage bolts that come up with a plate. So on the 3500 extended there's five of those adapters needed on each side. So we got 10 adapters and they're not cheap and then I, what I did is I measured between those, uh, took the two by two square, drilled holes in it, laid out my cross members, drilled holes through those, and had to figure out my width with my solar panels. I'm going with uh, two rich solar, 100 watt solar panels on each side of the max air fan. And then in front of that, uh, I went with a Panasonic, 325 watt residential panel and since those are different voltages so your 100 watt your smaller panels run usually around a 20 volt system that that comes off of the the cells that go down to your um, MPPT if you're going to use one of those your basically your solar controller uh, depends on which one you use Panasonic is like a 70 volt, so you can't hook those together into one controller because they're different style panels. So what you would do, you would lose a lot of 
um, a lot of the wattage, a lot of the power out of the bigger Panasonic because it would want to go down to the 20 volt and you would lose quite a bit out of it. So since I went with a DC to DC uh, Red Arc uh, 50 amp uh, charger, it also has a solar um, charger as well. So I'm going to take the two rich solars, I'm going to run those through the Red Arc DC to DC. Then I got a separate, um, I went with an SRNE solar charge controller for the big Panasonic and it's a 30 amp. So that panel will go into that and then those two will feed into the battery bank. Next thing I'm gonna go over is the, the, the Medic awning. It's the 9500 series, so it is legless, has no legs. And uh, boy, that was a process. We ended up shipping three of them to us. The third one finally worked out. The first two were damaged, but we love it. It is doing great on the van, provides us with shade, and uh, keeps us out of the elements. Now let's go around to the back here and we'll talk about the, uh, the boxes. All right, so on to the back. So right here with this beautiful aluminum custom cabinet. Thank you, Jeff from HEO for making this cabinet. We got two locks here and this thing opens up and we have a bunch of stuff in here. We got our chairs, anything that's kind of dirty or smelly or bigger items out here in the back. This thing's working out awesome. And on this side, we actually have a smaller box. And the reason for that is we had two of these, but due to the weight on the van, we ended up scrapping one of the boxes and putting this, uh, this box here that's made out of plastic. And we got this at Tractor Supply. And this keeps our wood stove and fire pit and things like that in. So overall, I think the back really turned out good. It's, it's a much needed uh, space outside of the van that we can keep things. And uh, this and actually they're pretty neat. I'll show you how they swing out and everything. Um, pretty cool design. I had a guy down the road from us named Randy. He actually built the swing arm system. So these obviously swing out and lock into place so we can get into the back of the van. All right guys, so I have this, this box open here. Pretty neat, we got a little handle down here that you pull up on. And this, this mechanism right here is what actually locks it into place. So we have this open, bam, locked into place. We can get into the van, piece of cake. Nice little step. And on the other side, I'll show you how we actually get on top of the van. All right, y'all, wanted to show you this other box here and how we have this ladder system on the van. So pretty neat design. We just climb right up here and get to the top. And uh, this has the same design as the other one. We have a little pin here that holds this open so we can get into the back of the van. Also up top on the roof, we were gonna do a deck, but due to weight issues on the van, we decided to scratch that. And this is a perfect segment into our tires. So we went one size up to a 245, 75, 16 versus the 225, 75, 16 that came on it. We went with aluminum rims, which helped lighten up each wheel by going up one size. So we ended up being about 10 to 12 pounds lighter per setup but we went up one size, which is about an inch bigger. Now, by going up a size, we also added a little bit more weight capacity on the tires. Uh, we went from about 2680 pounds per tire to 3042 pounds per tire, which uh, just a little bit more peace of mind on, on some of the rougher roads and things like that. So I'm not sure what we'll end up doing up top with the, um, with the roof you know we we want to do like a composite decking material but it's still up in the air we may add another solar panel uh, once we get on the road and kind of get uh, uh, more of a routine and in swing of things we'll kind of figure out what needs we need up there but 
I wanted to talk a little bit more on the weight. So the total gross vehicle weight of this Ram Promaster, now it's a 2018 3500 and it's a 159 extended, so it's the biggest one they make, is 9350. And we're sitting about 9500. So we're a little bit heavy, but I feel confident of reliability and getting us down the road. And I would imagine as we end up getting on the road, we'll end up making this thing a little bit lighter. I'm sure there's things inside the van that we can probably live without. So as we work out those kinks over the next couple months, we'll definitely keep you guys updated. All right, y'all. As you can probably see, I got a big smile on my face because this van build is wrapped up. It took about a year to finish this build. Now, we, we didn't work on it every single day, but uh, I'd say it, it saw it working on this thing probably a good six, seven months. But yeah, so excited. This thing is finally done. We're wrapping this up. We're on the road full time. So if you haven't liked or subscribed, please do. And we'll be putting out content regularly, hopefully every week, maybe more, maybe a little less, but we're gonna try every week. And I wanna give you guys, uh, fr from us, a big humble thank you for watching and following. And uh, we'll see you down the road.